in this video we are going to discuss about ip routing so what is ip routing and how to understand the ip routing and the process of the ip routing so you see the ip routing is very important and very uh, plays a critical role in networking so we already know routers look at the destination ip address and of a packet and route it to the destination that means router will look at the destination ip address and route the packets to the destination so that this IP routing is very important and simply calling IP routing is a process of moving packets from source to destination basis of the destination IP address. So destination IP address is required here and neighbor routers from which it can learn the destination IP address as well as possible routes to all the remote networks and the best routes to each remote host and also able to maintain and verify routing information. So these are the main key important functions of the IP routing. So you see the process as it looks is not very simple, but you have to take an example and you have to know about the IP routing. So you see here about you have host 1, host 2, host 3 connected to 2 switches as well as 3 routers. So when host 1 sends TCP segments to host 3, the following happens. So what is the following? You can see here the TCP segments handed off to the IP routing so that it adds a header with the source information that is source IP address and destination IP address and hands off that to packet to the next layer. So by providing the header with the source IP address and destination IP address it will be sent to the next layer and the packet is forwarded to the next layer and using the subnet mask of the host it will track the, de the destination address lies in the remote network and also the packet must be sent to default gateway to pass through the uh, default gateway it will go through the destination address here. So host 1 sends out an ARP request so that it finds the MAC address of the router 1. So when this happens the response is received it frames the packet and it will give the MAC address details of the destination IP address and also the address of the router 1 so that you see the host 1 is the source IP address and now the after the default gateway the MAC address of the router 1 is as a destination IP address. So coming to the next step when router 2 receives the frame it repeats the same process and packets again before forwarding it to the next router. This time the MAC address of router 2 is the exit interface and is the source address while the MAC address of router 3 is the destination address. Finally router 3 looks at the destination MAC address and realizes the destination network to which the packet has to be forwarded to. So it finds the MAC address of the destination host and frames the packet and it will forward to the destination IP address. So you see by the subnet mask of host 3 it is determined that the destination lies in the remote network that means from it travels from host 1 to host 3 through switch 1, router 1, router 2, router 3 and also switch 2 it will go to host 3 and hence the frame will need the MAC address of the default gateway as well as the destination IP address. If host 3 does not respond or not have a MAC address of router 3 it will send an ARP request again so that it will receive a response of the destination IP address where this packet needs to be forwarded to. So router 3 strip the frame header and look at the destination IP address and forward it to the switch 2. So from here the routing table also has the information of the best routes so that it is forwarded from router 2 to router 3 and router 3 to switch 2 to the host 3 here. So coming so since the received frame from host 1 earlier it has a MAC address of that host as map it has IP address in the ARP table. So ARP table has all the details of the source and destination to from, from which and to which the host TCP messages should be sent. So remember the source and destination IP address do not change throughout the process while the source and destination of the device will change. So coming to the above you can see that a new router has no configuration and a router is not going to discover remote networks by itself that means the router will not going to explore or discover the neighbors or the remote devices by itself but we have to give the source and destination IP address. So you will need to tell the router about the remote network. So we have to specify the remote networks 
so their source information their mac addresses their ip addresses so that the packets can be sent to the destination by the destination ip address and mac address so the packets can be framed and framed can be forwarded as a packets